My name is Paula Fairfield, and I'm a sound designer. And um, how did I become a sound designer? I became a sound designer sitting next to my dad, watching him build TVs and testing things with weird sound contraptions as a young girl, um, and I loved that. And then later as a student, when I was going to art school, I got a job at the National Film Board and became an apprentice for picture and sound editor. And watched, then had an aha moment during that summer watching him create sounds for a whale. The magic of, um, you know, with very painstakingly tiny sounds create a, a, a sonic picture as though you were right next to the, the whale. And in that moment, I realized what you could do with sound. Just a little bit, but it was enough. A light bulb went on and I was like, oh, I want to do that. If I'm working on something fantastical, like dragons, for instance, that don't exist, my job is to bring you to the threshold of believability. My thing is about viscerality of sound, the tactileness, how you can feel sound, how sound can make you feel things, and taking those things and manipulating and playing with them to help enhance or tell the story. Game of Thrones is a once in a career. I mean, if you ever are lucky enough, and I was, to get tapped on the shoulder for this amazing project. Um, it's amazing because everybody is inspired by everybody else. And I'm inspired by the work that everybody else does. And I hope, hope I inspire a little as well, but it's that kind of show. And that's, that's the best kind when you are treated with respect and given room to fly. It has definitely been one of the highlights of my career, aside from the fact that it has dragons. I mean, come on. creating the sounds for the ice dragon, I literally kind of got bones together to start to play with that. And with this chime, I built this gigantic thing and then and then recorded tons and tons of different kinds of movement. And I put a mic inside of skull and crushed it and kind of got all these kind of neat things and then started to assemble the tiny pieces as I would find the little parts that interested me and that made sense to me to then is reassemble this jigsaw puzzle creature. The film industry is an interesting place because we are telling stories and there are objects of those stories that are being told. There, I think there is um, a history in this industry of the objectification of women. And when there is such intense focus on that, um, you know, you have women being held up on a pedestal to look a certain way, to act a certain way, to be a certain way, okay? If you're not those, you're invisible. I think the um, peek into the dark side and the shadows of Hollywood lately is something that has had to happen for a long time. It's a very painful time in our history as people working in the industry, but it's especially painful for women because we have to relive all those. And we have to relive those stories that many of us have encountered. And we have to listen to the stories from other women. And it's really tough. We're in an industry where we tell stories and yet we've not listened to the stories that we have to tell amongst ourselves. And it has to stop. <laughs>